I'm Jen, and this is Prague, the heart of Europe, and my adopted home. Subscribe to get an American's take on this enchanting city and all things Czech. Welcome to the adventure. Ahoy, Vashikni. How's everyone's 2021 vacation planning going? I'm sure, like me, you're already sick of those Netflix travel shows and high definition National Geographic documentaries about exotic places all over the, the globe where you don't get to travel yet. So I thought today I would take you on a lower budget virtual tour of the mother of cities, Prague. So I wanted to show you some of the things that go totally unnoticed in this city, definitely by tourists and even by a lot of the locals. But first I wanted to quickly mention to my Czech and Slovak viewers who might be interested in studying international business in a program abroad. Last month, I was really happy to learn that a lot of you had applied for the 10 scholarships they offered Dream Prague viewers. And this month, IBS is opening up 10 more scholarships for viewers of this channel to attend their 2022 business program at the University of Laverne in California. California. Do you know how nice the weather is there right now? Now I've made a much more detailed video and I have a whole page on my website that goes into more detail so I won't take up too much of your time but if you are interested or if you know someone who might be interested in studying international business in California then definitely check out the link below. So on to all things the tourists miss in the Golden City. We'll start at the National Museum, just down the street here, where in 1968, troops from the Warsaw Pact countries came in tanks and rolled up Wenceslas Square, Vaslavska Namiesti, and shot up the museum. They say they thought it was a government building, um, and they basically opened fire. This left the museum totally pockmarked, and so in 1969, the communist government ordered that it be patched up. But in the celebrated art of Czech passive-aggressive resistance, the Czech workers did a crappy job and left very obvious patches where the bullet holes had been, sort of leaving it as a, a mark to what had actually taken place. The National Museum was beautifully reconstructed a couple of years ago. We're talking Beverly Hills level facelift. And though the, the designers of the reconstruction pledged to not cover up the bullet holes, they're barely visible now. So when you come to Prague, before you go in the museum, check out the face of it and see if you can see any reminders of this horrific invasion. When you're at the museum and you turn towards the street, you might almost miss it, but there is a bronze cross that appears to be almost melting into the sidewalk, and you might see some flowers or some candles placed near it. I often see tourists just kind of glancing at it, not knowing what it is, or almost actually stepping on it while they're trying to take a picture of the museum. But this cross actually has very important significance. This monument was created by artist Barbara Vesela as a monument to two students who lit themselves on fire in protest to this Soviet invasion, to this Warsaw Pact invasion. So first, there was Jan Palach, who lit himself on fire in January 1969, and he ended up dying in the hospital. And then a month later followed Jan Zayitz, who, who was a student as well. And this monument is said to mark the place where it happened. It's such a moving monument because you don't really know that it's there until you just kind of stumble upon it. And it almost appears to be like a scar or a burn in the earth to, to sort of mark the, the, the importance that both Palach and Zayitz had on the country. Now we're gonna walk down Václavské náměstí into Old Town Square, where you're gonna see some of Prague's most famous sites. You're gonna see the big ones from the guidebooks. Orloi, which is the astronomical clock, and Our Lady Before Tin, it's the Disney-looking church, and the statue of Jan Hus, 
And while you're looking at these things, it's easy to overlook um, a pattern in the cobblestones as just a pretty design. Now in Prague, you're gonna see some of the most beautiful cobblestones in any city you'll ever go to. And there's many designs to them and they don't seem to have any significance. But if you're just around the corner from watching the clock, um, you will see 27 crosses, white crosses, in the pavement or in the cobblestones. They are there to commemorate the 27 members of the Bohemian Estates who were pretty gruesomely put to death by the Habsburgs for daring to challenge Habsburg rule. Now that you know that they're not just fancy stonework but actually little memorials, you won't step all over them while you're trying to take a selfie with your Trudel Lake. Now here's something you're definitely going to miss, and that's because it's, well, it's missing. And that's Old Town Hall, or at least a large portion of Old Town Hall. Today, Old Town Hall looks like this, but before World War II, it looked like this. At the end of World War II, about a week after Hitler had already committed suicide, the Prague resistance started to fight against the Nazis in the Prague Uprising. And the Nazis responded brutally, killing children and pregnant women. It was terrible. They also started unloading all of their ammunition in the center of the city. And one of the things they destroyed was most of Old Town Hall. For some reason, you don't actually know that it's missing, but when someone points out, you can totally see the, the red part of it that has been sort of like broken off and then they've just sealed the side. Now what's there is a, is a park, a eh, park, grassy area, where you can buy beer and sausage and trdelnik. Now, if you turn back around towards the big Our Lady Before Tin Church, the one that looks like it belongs in a Disney movie, you're going to notice the Marion Pole. This is actually new, and it was kind of shocking after living here for nine years um, to come back from vacation and see like a totally new monument in the middle of Sparomach, which is uh, Old Town Square. But this is actually a replica of a statue that was taken down by the people, like torn down in 1918 at the end of the Habsburg dynasty. So you'll see this new Marion column, but what you might miss is just to the north, you're going to see a meridian line. This was used from the mid 1600s until the original column came down to tell time. So every day at high noon, the Marion column would cast a shadow directly down the meridian line. And that's how the Czechs knew it was time for beer. A lunch beer, it's acceptable. This rebuilt column, by the way, is super controversial. Um, it took 20 years of back and forth of people not wanting it built, people wanting it built. Um, it has to do with the Catholics and the Protestants and the Habsburgs, the Austrians, and uh, very controversial. So if you'd like me to look into this topic for another video, let me know in the comments below. One of the things all Europeans love to make fun of Americans for is our unnecessarily complicated imperial measurement system and the fact that we're only one of three countries on the planet to still be officially using it. Oh, the metric system's so easy. Divisible by 10. But the metric system has only been around for about two and a quarter centuries, so what did the Czechs use before that? Well, they used the Prague cubit, at least when they were measuring like fabric and such. So the official Prague Kubit, 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 no, they call it the Loket, and that is um, the Czech word for elbow. The official one is mounted on Newtown Hall, I think it's called, near Karlova Namjesti. So Przemysl Otakar II, let's get his name spelled right this time, decreed this measurement in 1268. It is said to be the precise length of an arm, presumably his, from his elbow to the tip of his finger, which is 5,914 millimeters. It was placed on Newtown Hall in 1760, so merchants could come uh, with their clients, presumably, to show them that they were not cheating them out of the length of fabric. I feel like they'd invent a measuring rod for the exchange offices. After you've
you've spent a while in the Czech Republic and if you've got an eye for details, um, you might see the, let, the inscription in chalk over a doorway that says K plus M plus B plus a year. This is also common outside the Czech Republic. I've seen it in Germany and in Austria, but I've never seen it in the United States. So on January 6th, the Feast of the Three Kings, carolers go around to some houses and the children in the group will take chalk and write over the door K plus M plus B plus the year. After a while, you start to see this on doors all over the place. And I even saw it outside the, the lizard gallery at the zoo. People assume that it means the, the initials of the three kings, Casper, Melichar, and Balthazar. But actually, the KMB, or sometimes you'll see CMB, are the initials for the Latin phrase that means Christ bless this house. And the plus signs, there should be three, represent the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you've ever been in Prague during the rainy seasons, you know that the Vltava, or the, the river, the Moldo, that runs through the center of Prague can get really roaring. Sometimes it can even flood. And a few times in history, it really has. If you happen to be in Malastrana, near the Lenin Wall, um, you can see marked on the wall the, the um, heights of various floods that has happened. And the highest one, the largest flood that Prague has experienced in a thousand years, happened in 2002. And when you're walking on Kampa, you can see this metal line in the, in the road, and that's actually a flood wall that they had to install after the 2002 flood. Now there's one man who's been sounding the alarm on these floods for over a thousand years. No one actually knows his true identity or where he comes from, but the people of Prague call him Radaj. He was actually part of the old Judith's Bridge. That was the bridge that was just a bit north of Charles Bridge that preceded Charles Bridge, but it was destroyed from a flood and then Charles Bridge replaced it. But archaeologists think that Bradach even precedes the Judith Bridge for various reasons, what it's composed of and how it's styled. Legend says that when the water level reached his beard, the city officials knew to evacuate the, the old town. And here you can see just how high the floodwaters rose in 2002. So I hope I was able to whet your appetite to come to the city of 100 Spires sometime as soon as everything opens up again. And when you're here, be sure to look out for all those little special details that make the mother of cities so special. Uvidíme se příští týden. Ahoj.